Hey YouTube, this is Marcus Oregero and again with another video. Uh, you'll have to excuse the sort of fuzzy camera image. I need to replace this camera. Uh, I got some sand inside on the inner lens and I don't think there's a way to take this camera apart to fix that and since it's a hundred dollar camera I'll just buy another one. Uh, but we're working on microphones today so I got my uh, replaced my high gear slash Cobra power mic. They've actually made some improvements to it. Uh, it is uh, December the 4th 2017 and uh, my old one here had an issue and uh, I figured for 20 bucks I can replace it but I noticed something here you notice how on the old one all of the components here are through hole including the transistors and things on the new one it still has the same switch the same outer housing although even the house the housing feels a little bit nicer uh, still has a little felt inside for a pop filter uh, still looks and operates mostly the same uh, except uh, the transistors and a lot of these components on this end of the board the resistors uh, the transistors now this capacitor and these two capacitors are still through hole but on this new one the transistors and all, all of these resistors are actually surface mount uh, the switch is still the same and everything but and you know still has the same element in the new one but they've actually uh, switched over to surface mount so they're still making good stuff so anyway I was talking to a local here to test my mic out and he's a guy who said that he actually likes these old Texas Ranger microphones here now this one needs some love I've got a whole box of microphones over here I'm gonna start digging through I've made microphone extension cables before for people and all kinds of things but he likes to feel this is a box of mics that I got from somebody else, actually. Uh, of just literally just old junk spare part microphones. So, like this one's missing this, uh, missing the weights, and this one and has a stripped wire. This one's busted all the pieces, but still has the weights in it. Uh, and he's just a pretty good old fella, so I think I'm going to try to see if I can cobble together a working Texas Ranger microphone for him. So uh, the Texas Ranger is a CB uh, CB radio hand microphone and some people like them because uh, even unlike my power microphone here it's got a little bit of weight because of the battery in it. These things, uh, let me take this apart here, actually have weights in the back of them. Uh, you know if you can get one that's in decent working condition they actually sound pretty good and they've got those weights in the back of them and that, that's the big draw for a lot of people because you can find a good sounding stock hand mic at Radio Shack you know the little those little superstar slash galaxy stock hand mics are actually I think sound pretty pretty good for a stock microphone but a lot of people like these because they've got these weights in them so okay so the components on this one are all gone there's the elements still there but you can see they've got these big weights uh, in the back of them here okay it's not magnetic right? that uh, they literally just put a big hunk of metal and screw it to the back plate to make the mic feel heavier and some people just like that so uh, let's see if we can't get something put together here for this guy that will work for it. alrighty so let's take a look here I've only got these two Texas Ranger microphones this one has the weight but no guts. Let's see if this one actually has uh, the proper internals here. And uh, see if we can get, I guess those were just extras out of that other one. If this one has the internals, uh, then I can just swap over the weight from that one. And I'm gonna put a fresh cord on it here. Uh, but he's one of those guys, he's, he's a, like I said, he's a pretty good fella. He's a, uh, but he doesn't have a lot of money, so if he wants something, if he wants a new microphone or wants something nice, you know, he's got to kind of hope he can find it at the local flea market or, you know, so I, if I can put together something that he likes, then, you know, why not? Jesus Christ. There we go. And I 
I've got a couple of these. Uh, actually, this one's a Radio Shack slash realistic. Here we go. This one is a Ranger. I don't know for certain, but we're going to check. Let's see what's in this one first here before we get too excited. All right, so that one does have an element and the switch, but they've got that what appears to be silicone. Let me zoom in here. You can see, there we go, it's about as focused as it's going to get. There's the microphone element itself. Here's the switch, and what the switch does, for those of you who don't know, in a CB radio microphone, or just ham radio, radio microphone, period. Uh, let's pretend we've got the back half on it, and you've got this little push to talk button that you press to talk. That depresses this plunger here, which uh, moves a contact between these different metal points uh, on the switch here and so uh, on, on a lot on like Cobra radios when the plunger is all the way out it completes the circuit for your receive for your receive audio and so when you press the button in the first thing it does is it breaks the circuit for your receive audio so your receive audio goes out and then it makes contact with uh, the, the points that both key up the radio and then there's another wire for modulation itself which comes from the microphone element here and so I'm gonna have to try to this one's got like silicone or something on these points here so I'm gonna have to try maybe to I don't really need to I mean I just I wanted to put a cord on it because you can see here the cord's in pretty terrible shape. So, and I've got cords, more cords that I can shake a stick at. Uh, this one was already four pin with some parts missing from the end of the cord here. So he desperately does need a new cord. We're gonna have to look up the wiring order for these microphones. We may just wire it for Cobra because everything I think is pretty universal. Alrighty, so. And there's some electrical tape here. Is that something that somebody has done before me? I, d I don't like random electrical tape inside things. I mean, at the very least, because what always happens is it always it always kind of does this. You know, it, electrical tape is nice for like straight on connections, like two wires. That, you know, go together like this. You wrap them in electrical tape to make it waterproof a little bit. But I hate when people just sort of bring two wires together at an angle like that and then just wrap electrical tape around it to insulate the splice. Yeah, it works, but then later if you need to do something, you've got this goopy, god-awful mess from this electrical tape because as it gets warm over time, it softens and just works loose. And now you've got this goopy mess. Let's take this little uh, this little piece right here loose. There's this little hold down bracket that sort of braces the cord where it comes into the microphone so that stress on the cord out here does not translate to stress on these electrical connections inside here. So. There we go. So you basically got these little metal Two little metal bands that sort of sandwich the cable and then screws that go through both of them and into the body of the microphone itself. So let's find a spare cord. Let's find a microphone that I know is crap, but it has a decent cord on it. And that one's got no end connector because basically what I'd like to do is just take a cord, unsolder it from one microphone, solder it onto another one. You know what? Hey, I've got my old power microphone laying right here with a good cord on it that I could unsolder and uh, I've already unsoldered that cord so there we go there's our cord See, I don't want to like just can I just yank on it there we go bam got it out all right all right so there's our cord that's gonna be the new cord 
Let's go ahead and plug in our soldering iron and let it be heating up and getting good and hot. Because a good hot soldering iron always makes life a little easier. And you know, since the front half on this one has a plunger that feels like it works okay. The back half on this one, which which back half looks better is my question. Oh, this one's got the hanger still on it. Oh, I see. So the weight is also what holds the mic hanger in place. Track and this one does look a little bit newer. There's some yellowing on the label, so we'll just keep this back plate and put it with this front plate here. All right, so now we need, uh, just while we're waiting on that to heat up, let's say, all right, so these are the parts we're gonna use. This is extra. Um, this one can go back in the pile. Uh, this is the cord that it's going to receive, which means, let me see, this is the bad back piece, okay. Uh, I'm just trying to get situated. Alright, so, oh, we need to keep track of that. So now, let's, uh, we need to keep track of these. Let's open up this just Ranger microphone and see what it looks like on the inside while we're waiting on that because this one's a different shape and everything but if there's some common components in here and something is you know doesn't work quite right we can cannibalize parts out of this one if we need to I thought I know this one is a Texas Ranger but let's see what it looks like you never know I know these screws are rusty. My big concern is that sometimes these old, old microphones that don't get used and things just wear out in them, where even though they may function, they will sound like absolute hot garbage. Oh yeah, this one's completely different on the inside. But this one actually does have a plunger with a cord that is already attached that does not have silicone on it. So, it does use a different element though. But that's not a big deal. See, I, I paid like 60 bucks for this microphone for my computer. It doesn't have a pop filter built in. $10 CB microphone has a pop filter built into the body of the microphone. Come on, computer people. So we'll put this back down in here, and I could translate, since this element's sort of glued in here, I'm not going to fight with that element. If it sounds okay, I'll just leave it in there. Um, uh, and he said he liked the sound of it anyway, so let me see. I bet you, and that plunger looks to be the same one. Now, this is different. The actual key button is different. But the plunger, the switch itself here, looks to be the same between them. Uh, so, let's take her apart and find out. This might, hopefully, hopefully it's not glued in there. It does not appear to be. There goes that idea. Oh well. That's why they're spare parts microphones. Alrighty. So we're going to give this thing a few minutes to uh, continue heating up. Yeah, I can feel heat coming off of it, but it, it's not. It's not good and hot yet. So we'll be back when it is. I don't. I don't feel like. Gomming up my soldering gun with rubber silicone. Let me see if I can find another microphone with a switch of that size. Yeah. 
pick. The Radio Shack may have one. It's of a similar age. Let's check and see. It's got a cord on it, but it's uh, an old 5-pin, but I can, as long as it doesn't have rubber silicone and the switch fits that recess, then that's all I really need. Because it's going to take me forever to get that silicone off of there. I guess I could maybe cut the wire back here or something. Like cut it here. And solder a splice in and then just kind of feed the excess up in here. But I don't... I feel like that would be shoddy workmanship. Let's see, we got one, two, three. Oh, gosh. That is a completely different switch setup. Look at this one. Instead of the, the switch on this one having an arm that extends out, this one just has a flat surface that the key up button depresses. So that's... Oh! And it's not even the same size. It, like, you can see here, instead of it sitting in a socket, like how this one has a little sort of socket it sits in, this one is just held in place by the mounting screws that hold the two halves of the microphone together, so that's interesting. So put that one back together. Save that one for a rainy day. And see, I can't use the one from my power microphone because you can see where this one just sort of sits down in here into a little socket. Let's see if I can wiggle it out of here. This one is soldered through a PCB here. Let me see. Are they the same dimensions? Where if I were to take it out... No, this one is physically... Oh, do you guys see that? Uh, there we go. This one is physically longer a little bit. So even if I were to unsolder this one, it wouldn't fit properly in here. Here's an old superstar. Let's see how this one's put together. This one, somebody scratched Dean Sucks into the back of it, so there you go. Aha! We might have a winner here. This one appears to have, and it comes out, the same type of switch as this one. And it appears to be best I can tell. Let me get this in the viewfinder here for you guys. It appears to be the same size. So that may just work. Now this one has a cord attached to it, but there's no plug on the end of it. And it's sort of stretched out and crappy looking. But, since we now have this, what I should be able to do now is just unsolder. I can just take this one out altogether. Try not to break it if I can help it. But I can, you know. There we go. And uh, now this one is the this one is the Texas Ranger that is going to be headed out the door. So are these just twisted or are they actually soldered? Let's pull on them and see. Usually if they're just, yeah, they're just twisted. Yeah, they were just twisted together, so there's that. There goes that old cord because uh, now, the important thing about the feel of this microphone is it needs the weight and the outer shell and this element which dictates the, uh, the sound of the microphone. This switch here, literally all this switch does is transition contact from one wire to the next. So, it's up to us to just rewire the thing properly. So there used to be a microphone element in here 
and it is gone. And these two wires are what fed it. So we need to take a picture of that and remember that. Black, shield and black, red, empty, red and white. There we go. Alright, so I can tell what's going on now. So, let's back us out here. And that soldering iron should be good and hot now. So, that kind of hold us still with the soldering iron too. There we go. Now, this is actually, if you remember, this is the positive wire for the element itself. See, that's why it's important to have your soldering iron good and hot before you start working. Because if it ain't hot enough to just go ahead and melt that solder as soon as it touches it, you will sit there and you will melt these plastic parts because you'll sit there and hold it and hold it and hold it and eventually the plastic parts and the thinner metal parts inside these things will start to warp. There we go. Now, we have our plunger. Bam! This should fit, hopefully, get it in the view here, right there, just like that. So now we need, let's look at our picture. Now I don't need this much slack. I don't like having that much slack on it, actually, because if you, I don't know if you guys can tell, but all of this right here is all naked wire and so I don't want that much excess wire hanging out around these other contacts so I have to figure something out there so I'm gonna cut some of that off I don't need that big honking piece of wire sticking out there I just want just a just a little bit, just very just enough to make a good contact with that little tab. That's all I need. I think I may have just broke it off. It's so old. Let's see if I can strip it back just a just a little bit, just a li very small amount, like a a sixteenth or a thirty second of an inch, maybe. That's all I needed, and I don't even need some, any fresh solder. I think what I, I'm, I think I may be able to literally just remelt the old solder and kind of poke the end of the wire into it here. Let's let's give that a shot. Right there. I'm gonna try the best I can to keep this in the shot for you guys. Pull the black wire out of the way here. I don't think that's going to work. I think I'm going to have to add some fresh solder. That old solder is kind of goopy and it's not wanting to wick onto the copper. So I can see wire poking through right there. So I may put a little piece of something down in there or just mash the wires up where they don't touch. But there's that one. I'm going to put a little bit extra solder on there because it's still not really wanting to stick to that old stuff. see through that hole there. Let me try to get it stood up because basically what I want is I want to fill that little hole that the wire is going through with solder and it's not wanting to stick to that old stuff. Clean out the tip of my iron a little bit. That is why I can't work with surface mount parts. 
because when it gets very, very small, I shake. I don't know why, I just do. Well, that's much better, much better. So now you can see we've got a good little, a good bead here of, let me stick my finger here so it'll focus, maybe. Focus on my finger. Focus. It might be as focused as again. But you can take my word for it. We got a good fresh little bead of solder right there on that contact point. Bam. All right. Next wire, there's a hole in each one of these tabs. And so what I may be able to do is take the wire and feed it through this hole. Melt the solder, obviously, and feed it through the hole until the coated portion is up to the tab and then that should achieve the goal. So let's give that a shot. I think I got it. Oh man, I believe I got it. I'm gonna, it's got a little bit of slack left. Try to push through right there. Bam. Got her. There we go. So now we don't have so much slack, and I can just kind of, you know, mash the rest of that slack up in there. And they go there. So I could cut the wire here. Because this and these Cobra mics, the way this is designed, is it sort of sits into a groove of the case here. And the other side has a similar groove, and that's you know your strain relief here. On these, it literally just clamps around this portion of the cord and holds it here. So we'll go ahead and cut this here. And then where'd the piece I just cut off go to? Oh, there it is. It was on the cutters. Okay. And then take our pocket knife. And so, what I would like to do is have a little bit out, so we can cut it to strip it back to about say right there. And that would give us enough length on all the wires, plus a little bit outside the microphone before the coil started. So we'll strip it back to about right there. Mark it with my thumbnail. Get a good old pocket knife. There we go. I think I got it. Got it started. Or right, I can just pull it. There we go. Separate our wires. There's. Oh. The blue one wasn't even used, so we just need black, red, white, and shield. Blue and yellow were not even used. So this is a six-wire microphone if we were to want to use it with something else. So we'll just cut these off down here. because they're not even going to be wired to anything. Now your shield, since we're down in here in fresh territory where uh, the heat shrink is no longer present, the shield is literally just a bare copper braided wire here. And I'm just going to pull it off to itself and twist it so that we have what is effectively one single wire now. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take and just see if I can just dip the tip of this wire right there. Oh, I see a stray wire poking out. That's the important thing about this shield wire. You know what? Let's tin it a little bit. Let's tin it just a tud, tad. Let's, uh, 
a little bit of solder on the tip of our iron here. So we got a little bit of a, of a droplet forming. And let's tin our shield wire. Bam. Got her. There's bare metal. There we go. So now we have bare metal on the three important wires. We need black. You guys see that? Melt the solder. There we go. Now that it's through the hole, the wire itself will hold itself itself still. Let's put a little extra solder on here. Just some fresh solder. Just to give it a good electrical connection there. There's a stray wire, but I can push that one out, push that out of the way with my pocket knife. Let's put a little bit of a little extra dab of solder right here. Just give it a good connection. You can see what I was talking about here. Oh, let's back away. Uh, what I was talking about, right? There, I have a little bit of a stray wire, so I'll just take. We'll clean that up afterward. After we're done here. Got it. Just an extra little glob to give it a good electrical connection. So I believe, I believe we're all good to go. But you know the way to find out. Plug it into a radio and test Audio it. Audio check one two three four five. Audio check one two three four five. We're good to go. She's a working. We'll close her up here. So now what we do is we put it all back together. We've got this one goes here. And that one goes there. But now mm, the clamp it quite as tight as I'd like it to. I think this cord might be just a little bit smaller in diameter. But it's alrighty so what I'll do is I'll put the zip tie right here so that the wire cannot be pulled back through its little clamp there or if it does it won't go far back in there I'm just gonna... there we go that's better There we go. So now we've got a good little keep it steady there. So I may open to take the back back off again tomorrow. Put a drop of glue down in there, but let's assemble it all. Oh, oh! Almost forgot. Extremely important component is the 
actual little bar. And I do believe I will put a little dollop of dielectric grease. Sort of, where is the contacts at? There. Let's see if I can get a pretty good little. And we'll seat it right. There's like a little uh, bump right there. There. And right there. Drop. And let's hook her back up and test it again now that it's fully assembled. Alrighty, so let's plug her in here, see if we get audio. Yep, we still get audio when we plug it in. That's good. Audio check, one, two, three, four, five. Audio check, one, two, three, four, five. Sorry. So we have successfully taken a pile of spare parts and uh, made a working Texas Ranger microphone for my old buddy old pal chicken legs who likes those microphones I just happen to have enough parts laying around here to cobble one together for him so anyway this is uh, if you guys have any comments questions concerns or suggestions please feel free to post them in the comment section below and as always this is Marcus out y'all have a good one